All right, guys, I feel like I've got my own uh, cooking show going on here. So, pouring down rain. The rain's just stopped enough so that I can have a chat to you guys. Working on the cruiser. So, I've just got my um, harness all laid out, taped it to the table, worked out exactly where every wire goes. So, this is the V16 uh, transceiver or the radio harness um, all the way down. So, I'll give you a look at that if you like. We're back on the cruiser and let's start building. Alright, so I've got my wiring diagrams for the wiring up the radio or the intercom at the moment. So I've stretched out my pre-made harness that I ordered. I've rounded up the leads that I don't require. ICS and playback and things like that. I've got power, um, receive transmit for the intercom my daisy chain if you like or I don't know whether that's the CAN bus but these white Molex connectors which join up so you, uh, you might have the RDAC, the compass, the radio, they all just piggyback off each other uh, the push to, push to talk left and right hand sides with the earth and all the way down to my headset jack that I've just put together um, with the console piece here I've made it so that my headset jacks the whole assembly. Uh, let's have a look. So this whole headset assembly can now get the idea. I've made that so that it can slide in and out. I don't have to disconnect this. It's just little black self tappers. Well, they were silver, and I've painted them. Uh, I'm going to self tapper that on, only self tappers I'm going to use, and then that is able to be removed for maintenance and stay with the aircraft. So this is one of those spots where I got lucky I guess, I didn't take into account the height of the torque tube, but the um, with this top console clear coat on, there's just enough room to get the whole console box, if you like, and stuff it inside the hole. But uh, probably could have moved back a little bit more. But that's going to sit there like that. All good. Going well. All right, another consideration. The console has got a 15 degree bend in it. So now when that's bolted down, these sort of sit flush. Very nice. So that worked out well. If you plonk something on those, they can't move. They're sort of uh, five mil off the deck there, I guess. So they just flex just a tiny bit, which is fantastic. So they're out of the way. Gonna sit there nicely. That'll sit like that. Going well. Okay, I'll let you know a little secret. Been huffing and puffing trying to get the um, stick grip. This is the Ray Allen stick grip. So, Obviously you don't want to grease it up, well you'd like to to slide it on, but yeah, you want it firm. So I've been playing around for a bit, I'm sure all my American buddies will be familiar with putting a cricket bat handle, new rubber on a cricket bat, but anyway. Um, so I tried, I tried some sellotape, I tried some like uh, clear plastic that I had, I tried some fishing line um, over the handle. And what worked was three paddle pop sticks or popsicle sticks, ice cream sticks, um, and I'll show you how I did that. All right, you probably see the issue here. So you get the rubber on a little bit, and then that's pretty much it. And you're going to sort of destroy the rubber. So what, I, what worked on the other side was two, uh, three, or four sticks in there. Slide it all in. Sort of position those at a third the way around each. Leave enough poking out so obviously you can recover the um, the stick. Stretch it on.
and we're on. And we'll just pull those sticks out. Beautiful. It's probably the best tip I can give you. Alright guys, so we've got a bit done today. Um, that's a long day. Um, started at 9, it's now 6 o'clock. So full day's work. Thought I would have got a bit more done, but sometimes that's how things happen, I guess. So I've got the um, headset jack in the back. Do a bit of time to actually work out how I was going to do that. Uh, ran the, um, the harness forward on the right hand side of the aircraft, avoiding the flight controls. Got all my Adel clamps or P clamps in there. Um, got the push the torque buttons on and the handles. Good little tip there with the, the um, pedal pop sticks. I probably spent two hours on the, getting the grips on and the wiring up to push the torque. Um, more of trying to just work out the process. So three pedal pop sticks in the handle, pushed it on, and that seemed to work. Uh, what else have we done? Tidied up the front. I've turned the radio on with the headset, so the headset works, I can hear myself. I haven't got an aerial fitted yet, and the radio doesn't necessarily come straight up on the MGL screen, so I've got to research that. Maybe I need to tell it what radio I've got fitted or something like that. Um, it's sort of hashed out like it doesn't recognise it. But, see how we go. Um, all going well. So this is the back headset. Jack box is in there nicely, just with, I've used self-tappers. Probably the only spot I'll use self-tappers, just because you can't get to the back. My plan is I'm going to rivet all this off. This will get riveted on. Um, inside here, if you like. It's in my tunnel. I've run the, the comms down this side. This string obviously represents my rudder cables. And at the front there, you push the torque. So, with the stick grips as well, you push the torque buttons. Um, starting to look like an aeroplane. My wiring, I like to think it's almost complete. Bundled up a bit. Sometimes it's better just to leave things go where they want to go. Firewall. Also did the um, carby heat lever for the Jabiru. Bit more wiring. Put my pedo system in as well. So I just blew through at the wing root, which gave me airspeed, so I knew which, ones, which one was which. And I've just simply labelled that with a bit of green tape. And got a pigtail there. I'll secure this, probably with one of those sticky pads and a zip tie. Same as here, my radio went underneath. So the V16 radio, I bolted underneath. Um, no other reason really other than it sort of wanted to go there. With the wiring harness, it, um, it just seemed to work better underneath, gave me more room, easier access, you can't see it. Um, so yeah, I ended up hanging it underneath rather than sending it up there. Just a reminder to myself, I want to drill through there because that's where my radio is. So, because I can't put any P-clamps or Adele clamps, I'll just use those sticky blocks, zip tie, because I think you'll get chafe. Um, nothing like having a bit of chafe. So, that's where we're at at the moment. Probably fuel system next will come from there and work out what I'm going to do with the fuel system. And then that side console can pretty much go back on. Just quickly with the MGL. Um, that's just the stock standard screen. I'll just get rid of the alarm. It's telling me it's low battery. I'm just using my model LiPo batteries. Um, you can see at the top there, COM1, COM2, uh, Sort of crossed out. Oh, if I flick on, flick on avionics, so it gives me power to my iPad. Um, so if anyone knows what I need to do to get the radio sort of recognised, and also I'm not too sure how you change change frequencies and that sort of thing. So a bit of research to go. Um, and your squelch. A mate of mine did show me. I think it was over here, but. Got a memory like a sieve, but we'll work it out. Okay, second cup of coffee, hitting the manuals, 
very frustrating just trying to work out the MGL radio. So I've been on the phone to MGL in Australia. Um, who would have known? Blue white goes to white and white goes to blue white. Playing with those wires, powered up the system and everyone tells me it should work. But it doesn't. So trying to get this thing built. I don't know if you can see a bit of the radio but it's hatched out red. Um, I finally got the the box to come up. So I'm getting closer. I haven't got an aerial fitted. Potentially that's an issue. No one can tell me whether that affects it or not. Obviously it'll affect the transmissions. But I just want the radio to sort of to work. So sitting here burning batteries trying to work it out. Alright guys, might leave that one there. As you can see I've moved on the bigger things. I've got uh, 120 horsepower mounted in the front, so the Jabiru 3300. Got that bolted on. Going to leave it for the night. Don't know why, but I'll just leave the crane there overnight. Need to pump the nose tire up. Um, had a few problems there with the um, MGL EFAS system and the radio. Still haven't solved those issues, but the guys up the road are helping me out. So, hope you enjoyed that one. Getting back into it. Engine's on. Let's get building.